glasses need love too. Are yours getting the love and attention they need? I don't know. We're gonna find out though. So, typically with an acetate frame, they'll need an adjustment every few weeks to few months, depending on the material that you start with. Now, to give you a little bit of an idea, Leibach & York, one of my favorites, is made using all Italian acetate. It's high quality to start with, but they also have different thicknesses of the blocks on top of that. You got four, six, eight. Some of these are actually 12. Those are fun. They suck for me because they're a pain to get in adjustment, but they're good for you because they're also hard to get out of adjustment. Really good at holding the lenses. I love that 12 millimeter in particular for glass because A, it hides that thickness. The negative there, it's a pretty heavy set of glasses that way, but oh, they're so incredible. I don't care, you might. It's your nose we're talking about after all, right? Anyways, back to the point here. So the material is gonna depend on how regularly your glasses need adjusted. Now with acetate, since it is a little bit of a water containing thing, there's moisture in here. And as that changes and fluctuates, the adjustment of the frame can change and fluctuate. So as time goes on, you need readjustments and heat softens the material as well. So especially in summer when you're wearing it a lot, you're outdoors a lot, typically they form your face a little bit better, but that can also mean they stretch out behind the ears, right here in the bridge. If it's a really thin material there, it lets it fold back out flat, which nobody likes because that stretches the temples out. And again, now it's slipping. And that's what we all hate, right? Slipping glasses. Speaking of that, I've got another video on a little bit of an adjustment you can do to help with that behind the ears. I'll link that card up here. You can check that out if you're interested. But the big thing here, we're talking about materials, all the materials. So this one, you can see we've got a little bit thinner material. If I remember correctly, this one was six. I don't have my ruler in front of me, but we're going to go with six. And that can be totally fine. Now, of course, they're going to need adjusted a little bit more, especially compared to Monster, the 12 millimeter acetate. That guy, God, you never have to adjust these things. That's not entirely true. They still need care, but not nearly as often. And then you can see there is a massive difference in the thickness there. You can actually see a little bit of the layers there. It's kind of hard to get on camera, but the extra layer is just that very back. In fact, my frame is a double laminate to get the eight millimeters because that's just the way the blocks were made. And that one, you can a little bit in the top corners make it out, but yeah, not really on camera. So anyways, don't ever take your glasses off with one hand. That makes you need readjustments more often. Listen to what I tell you, not what I do on camera, right? Now, that frame of mine is the model Amsterdam from Leibach. That one is eight millimeter acetate. Really, really good stuff. It's a good compromise between being a pain for me to adjust and being great for you to stay in shape. Still can be a pain sometimes getting lenses in and out of those. But again, that's my problem, not yours. And yeah, I'm the one that gets broken fingers over that cracked fingers, cut open fingers, <laughs> that happens. That's always fun. Now, beyond that, you have a whole other class. You've got, of course, the combination materials, which are the acetate front with the metal temples. In this case, four millimeter acetate with Monel and gold temples. And that is Savile Rose combination. Now they do have eight millimeter acetate in those, all the vintage, older style pieces are the four millimeters because that's what acetate was back then. So especially the authentic vintage, it's gonna be four millimeters. That's just what it is. Like it or hate it, that's what you get. I have one of those on the way. We'll find out if I like it or hate it. Fortunately, I can adjust my own perfectly. So if it is a high maintenance thing like an air-cooled Porsche or something like that, God, you mechanics that take care of those amaze me. Anyway, so. If it is along those lines, at least I can take care of it and I don't have to go see somebody every few days. That's going to be that bad. It'll be fine. It's 3D cut. <laughs> 
we haven't gotten that far yet. So, yeah, on the acetates, speaking of that, that is another big part of it, the way the material is actually cut. So if you start with something that has that wrap cut into it, which is that 3D cut I was talking about. So say this is starts as a flat block, right? Then you actually cut that curvature into it then it's going to be more likely to hold that wrapped shape, which is what we like. Now, typically, most frames are going to have about a six degree wrap from here to here to here. And that's just the arc along the front and that keeps it in front of the eyes a little bit more equal, not way out away from the face where you look like you have wings on your face. And I'm just spinning for fun now, apparently. And that is something that I do really like to see. Again, that makes that alone makes a huge difference in how that frame holds its wrap and stays on your face. That is, yeah, it's a big deal. It doesn't seem like it would be a big deal, but that's a big deal. The material is more prone to go back to that natural flat position if it's not been cut with that slot curvature in it to begin with. When that happens, it's fun, let me tell you. These frames where you wind up with a flat front like every few weeks, not cut like that. Now, on to the full metal frames, of course. We'll grab Savile Row again, Monel Core, rolled gold, great stuff. It's very easily adjustable, but it doesn't really come out of shape easily. And that's something that's really unique to Monel in the fact that. I'm back to cars again, right? So if you're familiar with spring steel, it bounces and flexes, right? You have to put a lot of pressure on it. You have to hold it there to get it to take shape and hold a shape you want it to hold, right? This is very similar. So the Monel actually, it can take some shock and bend and flex and still hold that original shape. You have to actually slowly pressure and hold it to get it to actually change shape. And that we can do right here. So you can see, you know, I can bow and flex that and it doesn't just come out of shape. You actually have to put a good bit of pressure on this hinge to change that shape and how it fits down across and back and over and around and everywhere else that I want it to fit right so you don't have a problem with it, right? So that is, those are most of the materials you'll see in ophthalmic glasses. You do get a few different variations. Occasionally you'll run across nylons, different types of steel and metal. Of course, you've got titanium frames, which surprisingly can range dramatically in the way they're made and the way they hold adjustment and shape and everything else, because just like everything else, there's different blends of alloys of titanium out there. Not all of them are good. Some of them suck. Some of them are amazing. For the most part, it is a good material for frames because it's lightweight, it holds its shape when it's a good blend and it doesn't have a lot of other junk in it, just to call it titanium, right? Then you've got nylon. That is what a lot of the sport wrap frames are made from because it is very durable. The bad thing there, there's not a lot of adjustment with nylon. It typically is going to want to hold the shape it's in and this is pretty much it. There's not too much more you can do in it from there. Sorry. But, fortunately the smart manufacturers know that. They put a metal core back here so we can adjust how that fits behind the ear. So that's something to watch for on the nylon frames, but again, you're mostly going to see that in sport wrap frames like Wiley X, Liberty, Varney, Oakley, that kind of thing. And there are a few ophthalmics out there that are nylon frames as well. Silhouette comes to mind, Rodenstock, Porsche Design, they all have nylon frames in the ophthalmic. And the good thing, again, they're pretty darn durable. It's a nice, flexy material. It wants to hold the shape it's molded into, particularly the good quality nylons, and they do have a little bit of adjustment. Now, of course, their way of doing that, you've got the metal temple again, right? We like that. It's good stuff. And I think that is... That's good enough to make your head hurt for one day. So we'll talk about more next time. If there's anything in particular you're interested in, let me know. We'll pick that up in the next video. Otherwise, you guys take care. I will talk to you next time. If you don't already, follow, like, subscribe, ring notifications, whatever. I'll see you next time.